This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Hing.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Throughout the nation and around the globe, from his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live on the radio here on the Contact Talk Radio Network, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. Today is all about the diet wars. And when we're talking about the diet wars, this binge and purge, we naturally go right to dieting, food, health, and so forth. But what we're really talking about in the binge and purge is about the mind, body, and soul and how we're taking more than we're giving back to ourselves. And so I'm going to explain that in more depth. But today it's all about calling in and talking about your mind, your body, and your soul and that balance or that alignment and if you're out of alignment. And so that's what we really want to talk about today. The phone lines are open to take your calls live. As I always say, have the courage to call in and don't wait until the last minute because then there's never enough time to get to the issue. So as we're working through the program, call in and let's talk about it and hear what the universe has to say. The toll-free number is 877-230-3062. So I want to start off, before I launch into the actual show, I want to start off with there's a Mercury retrograde coming up. It's uh, from January 21st to February 11th. And I heard all of the crowd. I even heard my producer, Bob go, Barb, go, oh, not again. <laughs> However, and it's an interesting thing, too, because it's coming right on the heels of that full moon that was very tough. Um, and then all of a sudden, you've got the New Year's resolutions, which we were talking about last week, the resolutions and the intentions and everything. And then how here comes this challenging kind of Mercury retrograde. And they're, they're always, you know, when I say challenging, it's just because they, it's always that gear down, slow down with Mercury. Um, so when it goes retrograde, it's a time to slow down and reflect. And, and I'm already feeling it. I've, I've got four planets on Mercury. So that are ruled by Mercury and um, whew, fun times. But the point here is, all of this is leading into how we've made these New Year's resolutions and these intentions and how we need to break it down into daily um, acts so that of achievement, these daily acts of achievement, so that when the Mercury retrograde hits, you don't fall off course completely. You don't just abandon what you said you wanted to do this year, um, because those are the kind of the elements. And it's a great year. It's an eight year. So be thinking of all about all of these things as it's coming up. Now, on, the, on today's topic, it's all about binge and purge the diet wars. And I was a little bit tricky there with you all because I knew what you would immediately go to and what you would think. And it's about diet and health and all of that stuff and nutrition. And yes, it is. However, it's far greater. It's about body, mind, soul, alignment. And the very interesting thing is I want you to picture it. It's a triangle. Body mind, soul, perfectly balanced triangle. And the mind is the self. It's the identity, the ego, the personality. And the body is the vessel. And the soul is source. We always typically lead with, and when you hear this, oh, it's mind, body, and soul enhancement, or mind, body, and soul you know, achievement, or it's a mind, body, and soul class, we're always leading with the mind. And I'm here to say, as I always do, change the order. It is time to lead with your soul. So we're going to talk about soul, body, mind, achievements, leading with source, working with the vessel that you created here upon this existence, this incarnation. You're going to come from 
leading with your soul, the achievements of the vessel, the body, the purity that you're looking for within your vessel, so as to align the mind. Because right now, most often, when we are dealing with weight issues, when we are dealing with diet issues, when we are dealing with health issues, whether they be physical, mental, emotional, it's because we're leading with the mind, the body suffers the consequences And we very rarely, if ever, stop to think about the soul. It is last. It's last on the list, and it needs to be moved to the first place on the list. So we're going to talk about soul, body, mind, as opposed to mind, body, soul. Now, I want to go to my first caller here, Heidi from Colorado. Hello, Heidi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm very well. Ooh, I like it. You're exuberant. What's going on? <laughs> um, nothing. I'm just, I'm gaining weight, and I always feel like I'm empty all the time. Like, my soul needs more, but I don't know what to fill it with. Aha. Uh-huh. And I was just going to say to you, you're gaining weight. As you said that, you're like, you're gaining weight, and I, and I feel like I need more. And I, what I heard was, before you said it, what I heard was soul empty, not body empty. Like, you're, you're compensating. Yeah. You're absolutely compensating. Okay, so I love that you called in, Heidi. (laughs) Thank you. I I love that. (laughs) You're spot on here. (laughs) (laughs) So what we tend to do, and and I'm going to talk in a general point for a second and then come to you specifically, but what we tend to do is when we're feeling malnourished, and I'm talking about nourishment for the soul, Mm-hmm. When, we're, when we're off alignment with our soul, we make up for that in the tangible ways. You know, the, the eating, the binge eating, the emotional eating, the, then, you know, the, the body starts to kind of shut down and or goes into overdrive because the soul is feeling neglected, depleted. And so what's our instant, you know, what we can do, instant gratification is the physical self. And that's how it manifests in when we're depressed, if we're unhappy, if we're sad, all of those, you know, look at when people either get um, divorced or they're, you know, you know, there's a riff in a relationship or something. They did, they do one of two things. They eat or they go and they don't eat and they exercise like crazy. Right. Yes. yes. Right. So you can see that how they're a natu- they are naturally connected. There are three parts of the triangle. It's the, it's uh-huh. the same whole. So in your situation, and before I go to that, I want to talk about this too, because it's all about making restitution. And this is a funny, this is really a great thing when you look at it. If you think of a bank account and you are constantly making withdrawals from this bank account, and you never put anything back in. At some point, you go to a negative balance. And that's exactly what happens with your soul. We go along thinking that we've got this really limitless, abundant bank account. We don't even realize that it's there. And we just keep taking from it. Take, 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 take. Until we go, all of a sudden you get a statement, you know, in the mail or something... And this is the universe kind of going, hi, how are you? Oh, here's your, here's your statement. Here's your soul statement. And you're like, negative 200,000? What? <laughs> so you can imagine, right? That's what happens. Yeah. Because that's, so those are the wake up, the, you know, the universe, your soul, it's always talking to you. So I want to click in with you so that, um, okay, so. They're saying to me that they're saying to me two things. We've got some I'm going to go with the the little bit tougher one and then the other one. You know, we've got some confidence issues going on. Uh-huh. And we and we've got some I never stop. They're showing me you like the you're like the energizer bunny. <laughs> go, 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 go. You're like you don't stop. And so all of a sudden, you know, both kind of on a physical level you don't do you, you don't sleep very much is what they're saying no. to me. You don't right? <laughs> right. I don't sleep very much. <laughs> I feel like yeah. I'm always somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. They're saying to me you don't sleep very much, you're constantly going 
and that, and so not only are you depleting your physical vessel, your body, but you're not recognizing. So, so what they're really saying to me is you're so slanted on the mind side of things. Your mind is mm-hmm. constantly going and you're, and you're being driven by your mind mm-hmm. that the body and soul are suffering. Those other two sides of the triangle are suffering. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're always feeling, you know, empty, if you will, from a soul perspective. Um, now, interesting thing is that you have a very, obviously, you can tell this from your voice, you have a very vibrant personality. So, there's, there's a, what I'm hearing is that there's a, you have a fear that if you were to slow down, you would be somehow less attractive, is what they're saying. That's the term they're using. Less attractive, meaning not beauty, you know, not physical beauty, but somehow less, less attractive in totality. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it really does. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. And there, so thereby, and and that would kind of tie back to you not wanting to be missed. It's it's like as if your soul came here and you go, I don't want to miss a thing. (laughs) And so you're like, You, you, but how do make, I fix it? <laughs> but this is all making sense to you, yes? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. But how do I fix it? Okay. How do I get balance? So what you have to do and what, you, what you're going to want to do is really start. This is about you coming into balance with your soul. It's almost as if your soul is this really exuberant, amazing, great kid. I mean, it's just, you know, when you, when you really think of a great kid, this kid is in awe of everything, in awe of life, and just wants to, you know, like take it all in. And so what you want to start doing with yourself, with your soul, is to say, okay, little one, and, and this is going to be a conversation. I'm, I mean, I want you to have this conversation as I'm saying it. Okay, little one, I love you. You are amazing. But now we have to kind of start coming into our, you know, our maturity. We're going to be here. We don't have to see everything in one, in one day. And as you start having that conversation with what I'm calling, what, what you want to call the little one. Hi, hi, little one. And that's not a derogatory. It's a very rich, you know, it's a beautiful, um, like, spirit name, you know, to have. Okay, little one. Your spirit will start acclimating to or gearing down is a better way to put it, meaning I can gear down without being less attractive. Meaning I can gear down and I'm not going to miss anything. I don't have to be on turbo. You know, I can, I can, you know, it's like, you know, a Porsche Cayenne or something go, you know, 195 miles an hour. Can you imagine driving the car at 195 miles an hour continually? (laughs) No. <laughs> right. But that's what you're doing, Heidi. You're like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I don't know, it's exciting and fun. And of course. And there's nothing wrong, with, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> However, what it's doing is it's wearing out the engine parts. It's wearing out the vessel. And it's fatiguing the soul because it's on turbo. It's 190 miles an hour nonstop. Mm-hmm. And so what you want to do is start gearing down. You want to start, it doesn't mean, you know, because I can hear you already. It's like your soul's going, ooh, gear down, then that means I'm going to miss a bunch of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) You're 100% right. Yeah, because I'm thinking in my head. You know, oh my, I have other plans. (laughs) (laughs) So imagine though, okay, so imagine that you need to, you just need to have a melange here. And a melange of sometimes you want to slow down. I mean, again, can you imagine you're at this beautiful, you know, five star hotel, five star restaurant or, you know, Michelin, two star Michelin, three star Michelin restaurant. Mm -hmm. And you go through it at 195 miles an hour. 
Do you see what I'm getting at? Yes. You yes. would greatly miss that moment and, and take it to its opposite. You're just walking through a beautiful field of, of wildflowers or you're walking through all of the tulips, you know, in, in Germany or something. Can you imagine that you went through it at mock speed? So no, that's that where I'm bad. saying there's a maturity now. You're, you're, you're in control of balancing your components. And the belief system needs to be, I'm not going to miss anything. If anything, I'm going to get a deeper, richer experience. And that will, because you're not used to that yet, it seems like you're going to miss out on something. It seems like you're slowing down. It's gonna, life is going to be, and that's a better way to put it, life is going to be less attractive. When I kept saying you're going to be less attractive, it's life, life for you is going to be less attractive. And that's mm-hmm. not the case. What's going to start happening is you're going to come into this richer balance so that when it's appropriate to be mock speed, you can be. And when you're meant to be in that, you know, that middle territory, it's going to feel comfortable to you. And even sometimes just to sit idle, just mm-hmm. to have that, just to be. And so, you know, we'll talk about a lot of this more, but, you know, it's, it's all about meditations. It's about trust and it's about leading with your soul. But you have to talk to your soul because it's, <laughs> they're saying to me, your, your soul comes in three stages or three gears. Uh-huh. And right now, up until this point, you've been in the highest gear. And they want you to learn the other two so that you, you get more of a rhythmic balance with yourself. And that will keep you then from, because look at, here's, I want to tie this back for you before we, you know, before I, I talk with you privately, but notice how what you're doing, you're gaining weight, you're eating, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What does that naturally do to yourself? It slows you down. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So your weight gain is directly associated with the imbalance of you of your soul constantly being on turbo. Mm-hmm. So it's as if it's the default mechanism. The weight literally, physically slows you down. It mm-hmm. makes it more difficult for you because it's it's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to start balancing and learning. Oh, I have two other gears. And I have the fluidity in between each gear to move through life. I don't have to move through life at, at mock speed. I'm not going to miss out. But your, your, your soul self is literally affecting your body, which is causing you to eat, which is causing you to gain weight, which is causing you to slow down because you're not willfully, naturally doing it yourself. You see that? Yes, that sounds really right. <laughs> so that's, that's really right about me. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. But right. I think I can do that. I think I can. Oh, sit absolutely. Down. Oh, absolutely. It's it's literally if you just say to yourself, "Little one, we're not going to miss a thing. I promise you." Let's start looking at the other ways to do this. You're going to come into alignment, and when you feel that anxiety and you start to eat. Because you're wanting to go, 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 but you're also somehow feeding yourself. Uh-huh. You'll stop instantly. You're gonna now. You're gonna have this image in your head of, oh, that's what I'm doing, and you'll you'll stop. You'll start to go. Oh, it's a transition. You may stop on a dime. It's kind of like your personality. I think is to stop on a dime. So, <laughs> I think you're gonna get that mental image, that feeling, and that mental image. And you're going to stop on a dime and you're going to start to course correct. You're going to start to say, okay, let me lead with my soul, meaning it's okay to gear down and, and still have an incredibly beautiful life. It's not going to, you know, you're, you're going to come to learn a rhythm is what I'm trying to say to you. And that's what's missing right now is the rhythm. So you've just been in one gear. You've got three plus everything in between. So we'll talk about a lot more about this, Heidi, um, you know, on our private consultation that you get. So you're awesome. Uh, you're like, oh. 
You're awesome, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, because now I, I have a way to correct that. I'm you know? happy. Good. Yes. Yeah, so well, we'll talk more about that, and I'll give you more tools and everything when we talk on our private consultation. Okay. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having the courage to call in live. You're listening to Dear James live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. We will be right back after this station break. to be more consciously enlightened is innate. Do you feel there's more to life? If so, find the resource that's right for you by going to dearjames.com slash resources. You are the reality you create. Make it a great one. When you ask a question, the universe hears you and in a multitude of ways, They seek to communicate with you to provide the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. From serious to silly, monumental to mundane, there's nothing the universe can't cover. Maybe the insight you receive is exactly the affirmation you were looking for. Then again, it may just give you a whole new perspective on things. And that's the beauty of the universe. Submit your question to Dear James at DearJames.com and click Ask. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dear James Live. Express yourself, tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. Again, we are taking your calls live throughout the hour, 877-230-3062. Have the courage to call in live. We just heard from Julie from Colorado, and epically on point. I mean, this is about how when the soul is out of balance, the mind and the body suffer, and if we're placing it last, and we've got to start placing it first, it's all about soul, body, mind. If we place them in that order, if we lead with our soul, then we start staying in much greater harmony until we just are harmony. And that's what we're looking for. So I want to continue about, you know, it's an inner dialogue, and it's an inner commitment. And it's a commitment to self. We think that that commitment to self is leading with the self. Let the mind lead. And that's not what this is about. It's about an inner commitment, your soul source connection. And when you stay and lead with that, it's this inner dialogue of listening. It's a it's a two way conversation. We can't always be talking. We have to be listening and we have to be listening to our soul, listening to our bodies. You know, your body and just like in Julie's case here, because the soul is out of balance, she's not listening to the soul and she's running with her mind. The body starts suffering the symptoms, if you will. And the body starts then saying, because again, it's a triangle, it's a balance, it's a balancing act. And so the body starts manifesting externally these imbalances. Here it is, it's manifesting it in the gaining of weight, 
but it's also manifesting it in a way that it's trying to say to her, slow down, slow down, slow down. And we don't look at it. We just think, oh, I'm gaining weight, still disconnected from this inner dialogue, this inner commitment, this commitment to self. So one of the things, and I, and I've already talked about that, that making restitution, but I really want you to understand, think about that analogy and that example and ask yourself, is my bank account, my soul, you know, my soul, body, mind triangle, my bank account, is it in balance? Is it in the positive? Have I taken more of myself than I gave back? We all have incredibly busy lives. The energy is accelerating at unbelievable speeds. Everybody feels like they have less time to get everything done. I mean, I understand this firsthand. So these are the things that are happening. And yet, if we don't make time for soul nourishment first, mind, and and when we do these things, they're going to be in concert with one another. I mean, are they, they, you know, they're attached. So when we slow down and we give us, give ourselves, a friend of mine yesterday said, James, give yourself 10 minutes at different times throughout the day to just bring it all into balance. And she was absolutely right. It was a simple act of remembering 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, throughout, you know, being awake 12 to 14 hours in a day, sometimes more. Um, it's, that's all it takes to place you back in harmony, back in balance and keep your balance from going into the negative. Because once you start going into the negative, all three components of the triangle suffer. The mind gets agitated, the body starts reflecting it, or we get lethargic or lazy or, you know, upset and depressed. We start eating And then all of a sudden the soul is suffering because we're not even thinking about the soul. We're completely disconnected and we're going into the negative balance territory. So that's some of the overarching examples of what happens when we're out of alignment. So again, we want to start with the soul. So we're going to go and I'm going to go through soul, body, and mind. Um, Nourishment for the soul is key. It is the absolute first thing you must do every day of your living, breathing existence. And it's right now, most often, the last thing you do. So switch the order. I need to nourish my soul. Just like the body needs nourishment, and then the mind needs nourishment, stimulation and activity and all of that, the soul needs nourishment. And if we don't do that, it's depleted. And it, it's in negative territory. So kind of ask yourself, the way to start off is ask yourself, when was the last time I fed or nourished my soul? And really stop and think about this. And that can be from the simplicity of just five minutes, ten minutes of absolute quiet and stillness. It can be meditation. The miracles of meditation cannot be understated. And a lot of people, I'm hearing people in my head going, I don't know how to, pardon me, I don't know how to meditate. I don't know how to do that, or I do it wrong, and that causes frustration. Meditation is stillness. That's all it is. It's ability, and it will grow and become more profound, and the more you relax into this stillness, this meditation, and you stop the chatter, you just kind of focus on something that's peaceful, or Focus on a flower, focus on a piece of light, focus on your breath, your breathing. Listen, meditation with music or a guided meditation. There's no right or wrong way. It takes practice. It's like anything. You don't get on a bike and ride it for the first time without falling over. You didn't learn to speak or write in one setting. In one sitting, pardon me. So, You have to understand that these moments where you just stop and take in the beauty of your surroundings, that fuels gratitude, gratitude's endorphins, 
all these things work in concert for nourishment of the soul. Rest and relaxation. I mean, there's a reason we have an expression called R&R. It's constantly going, you know, in America, you know, you're lucky if you get a week's vacation for a year of work. That's a tremendous imbalance. And so there needs to be ways where you compensate for that lack of R&R um, in a work environment situation in, in traditional living so that you're giving it to yourself throughout the day. Um, there's also a point with whether or not, again, we're going back to, is the soul elusive? You know, because, well, what's the soul and how, what is it? And fundamentally, so many people, you know, we're a kind of a technical society. We're a, a science society. We are a religious society, but we're also a spiritual society. And when you start realizing that the spirit and spirituality is innate, it is something that you can do in the privacy of your own home, sitting out on the bench in the park. It's about being connected to your soul. It's about listening. It doesn't require anything. It's not external of you. It is you. And so coming to understand that the soul and that, and that spirituality, the soul is not, is soul and separate of religion. They are two separate identities. They are two separate things. Your soul is with you 24-7. It never, it doesn't die. It transitions. So the soul is the one constant in your life. Acknowledge Start sitting and asking yourself if you if you don't. I mean, sometimes we're preaching to the choir and, and people listening do understand what the soul is. But there are others that are listening that don't know or have an inkling or have this, I feel something, but I don't know how to access it or, or I don't trust it. I don't know how to trust it. I, I've been disconnected. It's coming into trusting your soul, hearing your soul, listening to that quietness. If it's loud, if it's got a lot of judgment, if it's got all this stuff, that's your mind. That's your personality, your ego, your mind. Your soul is going to be that really subtle, quiet voice, knowingness in you. And you'll learn. And the more and more you tune into it, the more and more you trust it, the more and more you come into balance with it. Even if it's saying, I mean, I, I used to, uh, I do a lot of walking and there would be times where my soul would say, cross the street, now cross back, now cross back over. And I was literally doing this, and I thought, God, if anybody's watching, they're probably thinking I'm crazy. And finally, I kind of stopped, and I said, okay, soul, come on. You know, like, why are you, why are you doing this? Because this, this looks probably silly externally. And the answer I got back was, because we're training you to listen. We're training you to tune in and listen. And right behind that, which is self-evident, is in listening to your soul, you also have to marry it with willful action. That has to come in concert with. So, as I say, you know, when you're listening to the soul, that's make time for miracles time. Because the soul offers you such knowledge, such peace, such consistency. It's rich. And so that's make time for miracles is what I call it. Um, so make time for miracles. Listen to your soul. You know, another big challenge that we have in life on the soul level is, you know, time management, making time for everything. We have incredibly busy lives. We've got dual households or single parent households. They're working. They are going nonstop. And it's like, how do you fit one more thing in? And some of that has to come where you work collectively as a unit you get into harmony with these these activities and you have to have these conversations either with yourself yourself and your children your spouse you know yourselves your spouse and your children and you start saying let us make these things these activities let us build them into our routines so that they become because you'll be amazed children will be amazed when they, because they emulate us, and they will sit, and then they'll have knowledge. They'll say, oh, mommy, let's sit down and meditate. They may not, or you may believe that they don't know what that means, 
but somehow innately they do know what that means. And you're then including them in this daily practice of time management and of making, of putting the soul first. And then all of a sudden they grow up far more enriched with these practices because we made time for them together. It wasn't that we had to exclude them from this time. So work with these things. Also, you know, for the soul, support groups. You know, look into the spiritual community and look for things that resonate with you and attempt to attend them. You know, make time. It doesn't have to be something, you know, soul groups or external um, support types things. They don't have to be daily. But is it a once a week, you know, support group or something or, you know, some type of activity that brings you in connection with your soul, with your spirituality? And certainly at times, that's what church is you know, as as well is a, a resource for. Um, just make sure that it resonates with you in a way that brings goodness to your soul and levity and, you know, that feeling of that felt really great. That's what you're looking for when we're talking about soul nourishment. Um, and also, I'm a big believer in past life regression and looking at how that can nourish the soul by freeing it from past residue that you're meant to transcend. So look in those ways and see if there are practitioners. There are many people um, that do, um, you know, obviously Dr. Brian Weiss, um, many practitioners that do, uh, uh, Richard Sutman does CDs that you can do this at home as well. And it's a form of meditation, but it's past life regression. You begin to see things, you begin to get aha moments because you release things from the past that are affecting you today. That's all part of nourishment for the soul. While we're talking about soul, mind, body, the binge and purge, the diet wars. You're listening to Dear James Live. Express yourself. We'll be right back after this studio break. Available for private, individual, group, and corporate consultations, Dear James will provide you with the intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Schedule your consultation by going to www.dearjames.com and click on Consultation. The gift of giving is immeasurable. Give of your time, talent, resources, and money. Give not only because you can, but because by doing so, it is already coming back to you. As a people, we are only as strong as the least among us. Together, we harness the power of the collective whole and see through our deeds the power of miracles, both large and small. Find the charity that's right for you by visiting www.dearjames.com and click on Charitable Giving. One person or kind act really does make the difference. When you ask a question, the universe hears you, and in a multitude of ways, they communicate to you the intuitive insight, answers, and advice you seek. Ask Dear James a question and experience the magic of the universe. Visit DearJames.com and click Ask. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dear James Live. Express yourself, tell it like it is, and then hear what Dear James has to say. We are talking about binge and purge, the diet wars, all about the sacred balance of of soul, body, mind. And we're going to move into the body. And uh, the body is, again, it's all about balance. It reflects It is the external way of reflecting what is internally happening. There's no other better way to put it. Um, And when we struggle with 
our weight and and our balancing and everything. Some of that. So when we're talking about body now, so we've talked about soul and how to get the soul and nourish the soul and get it into alignment first, place it first. So immediately what comes in concert with it, but next is the body. The body has to be in balance. It needs its proper nutrition. It needs its proper rest. It needs its proper exercise. You know, it's all of these things that the vessel, the purity of your vessel, and the more pure your vessel is, the more in harmony and alignment your triangle is going to be. So nutrition obviously is a major factor. It's, you know, it's that old story of garbage in, garbage out. And when we don't think about what we're putting in and we're just eating away, it's going to affect our soul. It's going to affect, certainly affect our mind. I mean, everything you put in is chemically altering and affecting your body. So you have to realize, you know, we put things in, it it starts to turn to sugar, it metabolizes, we've got high glycemic things, all these things that are happening that are chemically reacting with our body, preservatives, all this stuff. So it's for us to be more mindful about If there's an expression of garbage in, garbage out, change it to purity in, purity out. Start looking at what you're consuming. Look at the portion that you're consuming. Portion control is huge. When you start looking at kitchen cabinets, um, you know, I I used to do design work and so forth. And back in the 50s, the plate size for dinner was roughly a 9 to 10 inch plate in diameter, a 9 inch to 10 inch diameter plate. That was the dinner plate. Plates now are a minimum of 12 inches up to 14. Kitchen upper kitchen cabinets had to be deepened in order to hold these larger plate sizes. And we then And look at all the places, you know, the buffets and the all-you-can-eats and all of this stuff. The portions are out of control. And if you attempt to consume all of that, you're causing your body to work in overdrive. You're causing your body to be out of balance. And so you want to start really being mindful. Portion control, purity in, purity out. Because the alternative is garbage in, garbage out. Um, If you think about a grocery store, and this is a really great rule, and it's very funny. Visualize the grocery store that you shop in every week or every day, however your shopping goes. And if you notice, pretty much all of the purity items, purity in, purity out, are on the external walls or the exterior aisles, if you will, of that grocery store. Meats, produce, poultry, dairy, fruits, vegetables, all of those things line the perimeter walls of the grocery store. And all of the, for lack of better words, garbage stuff, all the package, the processed, the the good, you know, we call it the good stuff, you know, the cookies and the chips and the all this stuff is all up and down the center aisles. If you spend more time in the center aisles than you do on the external aisles, there's your answer. Start shifting yourself from the interior aisles to the external, the perimeter aisles, and try to get that more in balance. Um, Things of that nature that, you know, there's all these yo-yo dieting and, you know, the fad diets and the supplements and the juicing and the cleansing and you know, and everything in its right moderation. But ultimately, you would have to do none of that if you were in balance with these three elements. If mind, body, and soul. Notice how I said it? Mind, body, soul. It's the old way. Soul, body, mind. If you rearrange them, because there is no magic pill. No matter what you see on TV, no matter what, there's no magic pill. There's only will. It's your will that will change you and say, I'm going to put my soul first. I'm going to shop at the exterior 
aisles first. I'm going to utilize and focus my budget that way. It's your will. It's your will to place these things into alignment. It's not a supplement. It's not a fad diet. It's not, you know, I did the South Beach diet. I did the, you know, Nutrisystems. I did all these things. That's great. They all help to a degree, to a point, and then they stop. What you have to learn is the principles of what's behind them. Nutrition, purity in, purity out, portion controls, all of these different things. That's what they're really teaching you. So you've got to fundamentally learn those elements so that you don't need the programs. You don't need the fad diets. You need the discipline and the will to do that work yourself. Um, the body also exercise. You know, exercise can come in so many forms. There's, you know, money's tight these days. Um, you know, people are coming into better circumstances and all that. But, you know, there's gym memberships and things like that. Everything, you know, there's, there's a, you know, it's monetary. It takes money. But you don't have to. You can literally work out in your home. So think about the fact that you can, you can do walks in nature. That's certainly nourishing the soul. It slows the mind down. It gives you peace. And it's meeting what the body needs in terms of exercise. Walking, if you want to burn fat, walking is the sole way to burn fat. Not when you, when you do uh, cardio, aerobics, these types of things. It's burning fat, but in a different way. If you want to burn solely fat, you walk. You keep your, your breathing and your heartbeats under, I believe it's, you know, 114 for a woman and 124 for a man, um, that ensures that you're solely burning fat. And, you know, I had a trainer one time and he said to me, listen, you want to burn fat? This is it. It's boring or it can be. So walk and do something, go out in nature and do the walking because to do it on the treadmill can be boring. Now, if you're in winter places, it is the treadmill. So make it fun some other way. See if there's something that you can do that engages your mind in a positive way while you're walking and, and working out weightlifting running yoga pilates martial arts all of these different ways and again you can include your children in this you can include them in workout time make it fun make it communal get with your neighbors or your friends or coworkers and say let's walk at lunch let's do these different things so as to place the body in and, and you know, what I'm hearing, too, is and don't be hard on yourselves. It doesn't have to be absolutely, you know, religious. This has got to be like this. It's got to be regimented as I'm banging on my desk. Um, it, you're meant to be in balance. So ebb and flow with it, but keep keep that ebb and flow consistent. And that way your will is consistent. And this is all about how we were talking about daily pieces of this, um, how you do things daily, set your intentions daily, and they will bring about greater change um, for you. Another great item, and people do not think about this because it's not a fun topic, but I'm going to you know, touch on it quickly, um, is the, uh, to do sessions of high colonics. Um, you want to have a reputable practitioner doing these. Um, but again, in terms of purifying the vessel, um, you can imagine, and, and from a personal experience, I've done this. I did it when I was uh, 40 years old and I was amazed at what, um, was eliminated from these high colonics, these sessions, um, and the purity that you felt after them. I did, I think seven to nine sessions at, um, over a, a period of, um, about two months. So look into that as well. See if there's a practitioner, again, reputable practitioners with that, and, and look at that as well as a way to purify and cleanse the body. All right? And last but not least, we are moving into what does the mind need in order to be in balance? Because so often we've been leading with our minds, and this is the era, this is the time to switch from leading with your mind, your personality, your ego, and let the soul lead, as I say. So the mind, we're in, we're in drastic need of positive imaging. And, you know, the mental elements here, 
what we see on television, and this is over and over and over, you're, you're just barraged with it from print ads to TV and so forth. It's all about the imaging. It's all about the perfect body and the, you know, the airbrushed body and all of this stuff. And that's not reality. That's not the reality we live in. But it plays a role in our psyche. And so one of the things is to acknowledge that that is taking place and to transcend that message. Don't become it. Don't become the result or the effect of it. Don't become the depression. Don't become, don't beat up on yourself and say, oh, I don't look like this. Start looking at how you can align with yourself. Use it as a motivator, not a detrimental foe. You want to start finding positive imaging. Talk with your family, friends, sisters, brothers, coworkers about positive imaging from a positive perspective. Not the negative of tearing it down, but the positive of building up how you look and feel and how you can work together to be in harmony and balance. That is a beautiful gift you will give each other and, and certainly give yourselves. Peer pressure, partner pressure, all that good stuff, do away with it and do not buy into it. It is the negative aspect of the opposite of which you want, which is positive imaging. So don't buy into it. Stay true to yourselves and just hold that balance and that harmony because that peer pressure will lead to full scale imbalance. That's just a guarantee. Um, work with the mind in terms of, you know, again, self value, worth, esteem, confidence. It's all about telling your mind your beauty, your truth. Don't tear yourselves down. Build yourselves up. That's what you want. And then align that with your beautiful, willful action of putting your soul first, shopping on the perimeter of the grocery store, you know, on those aisles, getting proper rest, getting proper nutrition, all of those things. They're willful choices. Clothing, style, appearance. It doesn't matter what you weigh, what your body shape is, you can look and feel good. You just have to choose that. You have to say, I'm going to put this on because it makes me feel good, as opposed to choosing the opposite, which is to be, in essence, lazy or not care, and say, I don't care anymore, so I just kind of come out the way I am. Again, it's will. It's will that will move you, because that act in the mind of saying, it doesn't matter. I, I still need to look and feel good for me that will then put you in harmony and balance with the soul, which will put you in, you know, in, in uh, harmony with the body and so forth. All of that culminates. And last but not least, before we're wrapping up with the show, is look beyond the weight. Look inside for both the issues and the answers. Look inside of yourself. You know what they are. And you know how they're manifesting themselves. Face your fears because fear is your friend. I've said before, it's energy. It's a catalyst. And then look, if there's any types of eating disorders or anything that you're dealing with and so forth, go to um, NIDA. It's the National Eating Disorders Association. And their, their uh, website is nationaleatingdisorders.org. And seek help. Find this alignment. Because all of this, you know, from... And certainly with the mind, meditation, aromatherapy, homeopathic wellness, all of these things play a role in the betterment of your mind, in the wellness of your mind. And once you have this triangle in harmony, in balance, your life is going to be so much richer because it's just built upon this really, truly, beautifully balanced foundation, this soul, body, mind experience. And that is something priceless. It cannot be bought. It must be willfully achieved. With that, you've been listening to Dear James Live. Express yourself. Tell it like it is. And then hear what Dear James has to say. We've been discussing Binge and Purge, The Diet Wars. We'll be back next week. And as I always say to you, no matter where you are or whom you're with or what you're doing, wrap yourself in goodness. You've been listening to Dear James Live on the radio with your host, Dear James. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions 
and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com. 